Hi, my name is Jonathan. I am director and co-founder at Rodent. And in this video, we're going to look at how you can get your payroll journal set up in Xero. So if you're using Xero to do your bookkeeping, but maybe we do your payroll for you and send you payroll reports, we're going to show you how to get that data into your Xero account. So what often happens is people just post the payments to the individual and to HMRC director's payroll and actually the best way to do it is get a journal in there first and the reason that's really good is it because it highlights then if for example maybe you misallocate payment don't pay things uh, that you think you've paid it will highlight that those items are on paid in your zero data so let's jump over into zero uh, you can see we're here now and obviously we've got the new menu systems which came in in november 2018 so you'd start by clicking on accounting at the top and scrolling your way down to manual journals. If for any reason you can't see this, get in touch with, with us here at Raiden or whoever your kind of uh, subscriber is for Zero. It might be that you haven't quite got the permissions to see everything, but hopefully you can see accounting and then manual journals. By clicking on that, you'll see that it loads a new screen and it will list any journals that have already been put into the system under this posted tab. Now you can see we're using a demo kind of client here, so there's nothing in there. If you hit new journal, it'll open up a screen that looks a little bit like kind of the invoice and bill screen that you've possibly seen before. And here we're going to set up the, the basics of a payroll journal with some made up information. Now what we'd normally do is maybe we'd call this payroll and then the month we're dealing with. So let's put in February 2019. You put in the date, normally the date that your payroll runs. Some people like to put it as the first of the month, so it's always in the reports from the very start of the month. It's entirely up to you. In this, we're going to put through that, say, let's say our payroll is paid on the 25th each month. So we're going to put that in there. Then we need to break down the payroll journal into the different sections. So we've got the cost to the business. And this is what hits your profit and loss report. So that will be the gross cost of employing people. That goes on the left hand side, this debit column that you can see in front of you. And on the right hand side, you've got the credit column. The credit is effectively who you need to pay. So let's get started. So we'll start with gross wages here. And we're going to put this into our balance sheet and it's going to go under the salaries code. Now, sometimes you might split this out and have directors separately. That is kind of a, often something we would recommend. But for now, we're just going to try and keep this one really simple. So we're going to say that the gross wages are £2,000. I'm going to be making up figures here. They might not make any sense, but it's just to show you how to do the journal. On top of that, we're going to have employers and national insurance. I'm going to put employers and I. And that is effectively the, the cost to the company of the employer's national insurance. So it goes on top of the gross salary. It's not the NI that gets deducted before you get to the amount you pay the employee. This goes on top. So we're going to put in that that's £100. So you can see there in the subtotal under the debit column, the left hand column, that the total cost to our business so far is £2,100. Now with auto enrollment uh, and generally in pensions, you might have a pensions cost too. So as we start typing in pension, you can see with all of these, as I start typing in what it is I want, zero will pick up the items and the kind of ledgers, the, the lines, the categories, whatever you want to call it, that might be most relevant. So this is pension cost. Again, I'm going to put in £100 here, keep it nice round figures. So now we can see our total cost to the company is £2,200. So where do those things need to be paid? So what you first have possibly the most important one in, in most people's eyes is the net wages. So the net wages is the amount that actually needs to be paid to the people you employ, to your team. So we're going to make up some figures here and we're going to say that the net wages that need to be paid after the deduction of income tax, employees, NIC, employees, pension contributions, maybe student loans, is 1,500. That's the amount we have to pay to the individual. Then you have PAYE or income tax. I'm going to say here that the amount we need to pay HMRC for PAYE is going to be, sorry, a bit less than that, £350. And we have national insurance, and this is going to be both the employee and employers and I. So you can do these as separate lines if it makes it clearer for you, but we would normally group them. So you can see that on the second line, we've got £100 of employers national insurance. And we're going to assume here that we also have £150 of employees national insurance. So that's essentially what you're paying to HMRC on behalf of that employee. 
So we're going to call this line NI, there's an NIC line, and we're going to say that that all goes in there. So 100 plus 150 is 250 pounds. Um, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to just change that amount because it, it won't come back otherwise. And then we've got the total pension cost. So pensions payable is the line that will include both the pension cost for the employer and the amount that's deducted from the employee's pay. And that's the kind of balance and figure we've got left that's under 50 pounds. As I said before, you might have, say, something like a student loan um, or other kind of costs or deductions that go in there. You've just got to make sure that that left hand column comes back to the total cost of your payroll. So the gross salaries, the uh, pension cost employees and I, the cost of any other items. And on the left, you're breaking down who it is those different items need to go to. And that's it. That's the basic of how to do a payroll journal in Zero. If you've got any questions, obviously, you can come to us. You can come to us on email via our website, uh, grab us on social media, ask us any questions. If you're a client, as you know, you're on fixed fees, so you don't get charged for asking questions. We want you to get in touch. I hope that's helpful. Thanks very much.